Welcome back, one and all, to another Space News Weekly Rundown with me. We once again have lots to discuss regarding Starship and the status of the first orbital flight, as well as some big developments and setbacks at Blue Origin, as well as lots of exciting launch previews to run through. So let's get things going, beginning as always with Starship updates. <laughs> Work continues on the ground infrastructure at Starbase. The new, bigger, wider High Bay, nicknamed by the community as the Wide Bay, continues to spring up with lots more vertical and horizontal structures being added over the past week. When completed, this will allow SpaceX to construct more Super Heavies and Starships simultaneously, so that once they finally obtain approval from the FAA, they can really start launching these massive rockets at a good cadence. I've actually got quite a bit to discuss about the FAA actually, so stick around for that. First though, I want to talk about the new crane. I mentioned the arrival of this new beast in last week's video, and now I can talk about its completion, since SpaceX wasted absolutely no time in getting it all assembled and put it to work. Over the past week, we saw it go from just a cab on some tracks to a fully built machine. With the assembly of this crane, SpaceX dismantled their slightly taller rented Franken crane, the colourful giant that I think will always have a place in our hearts due to its funky colour scheme, and of course this was the crane that SpaceX used to fully stack Ship 20 onto Booster 4. As mentioned, the new crane isn't quite as tall as Franken Crane, so presumably nothing else heavy needs to be lifted to the top of the orbital launch tower for construction. The new SpaceX owned and branded crane is basically identical to their current rented yellow one, nicknamed Bucky by many. Actually, that's a good segue, as Bucky is in the process of being dismantled as well. Parts of the boom arm have been moved to the build site, so it's likely that SpaceX will use this one to work on the construction of the wide bay. It's looking like stage zero is getting closer and closer to completion. Over the past week, SpaceX have been removing a lot of the scaffolding and the elevator for the orbital launch platform, and the catch arms have had these triangle-shaped extensions added. These look like they'll be used to help keep the booster stable when the arms are in motion. Lunar Caveman on Twitter created some brilliant diagrams, as well as pointed out a socket on Booster 5 that the stabilizers will probably be attaching to. The presence of these sockets on Booster 5 hopefully means that Elon's optimistic plans to use the catch arms as early as the flight of Booster 5 is a bit more realistic than we all thought, and that it'll only be Booster 4 that splashes down into the ocean. Speaking of Booster 4, and indeed Ship 20, I think what we all want to know is, when flight? <laughs> While Stage 0 is still being worked on and will require significantly more work before it'll be operational, the vast majority of it isn't actually required for Flight 420, since the booster and ship will be splashing down in the ocean rather than returning to the launch site. The primary barrier to flight right now is waiting for approval from the Federal Aviation Authority. For a bit of background to anyone new here, the reason why the FAA need to approve a Starship launch is because when SpaceX initially purchased the Boca Chica site, their intention was to use it for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches, and as such, the FAA's environmental assessment only assessed the impact of Falcon flights. It was only in 2018 that SpaceX announced that Boca Chica would instead exclusively host Starship flights, and therefore the FAA would need to do a new assessment to see if Starship will affect the environment significantly more than a Falcon 9 or Heavy in their previous assessment. The public comment period for the assessment has now concluded, and so now the FAA and SpaceX will work together to go through the comments and consider if any revisions need to be made. If significant environmental concerns are raised, then an entire environmental impact statement will need to be completed, which could take years. If not though, then things can be wrapped up fairly soon, although it's not exactly known how soon. It could be a few weeks, or it could be a few months. Either way, so far to my knowledge there haven't been any significant concerns raised for Starship flights compared with Falcon flights, so I'm keeping all my fingers and toes crossed that SpaceX can sail through the approval process, after which they can then apply for a launch license for Ship 20 and Booster 4, so best case scenario, we're probably looking at one to six months, with the launch likely taking place in early 2022. But of course, worst case scenario, it could be up to three years, but thankfully, that's not looking particularly likely at this stage. And don't worry about having to go through this whole rigmarole with every subsequent flight, this is an environmental review of every Starship launch, so this only needs to be done once, unless we ever get a Starship Heavy, that is. I'll update you all as this review period develops, and I very optimistically hope that I might even be able to say the whole matter is concluded next Monday, so make sure you've hit that subscribe button down below to ensure that you stay in the loop 
YouTube as I make these videos every single Monday. And of course, one like equals one prayer for the FAA to approve swiftly or failing that, it does still very much help out the channel. So it's always very much appreciated. What do you think will happen if the FAA demand a full new environmental impact study? Will SpaceX move elsewhere or will they simply have to turn the other Boca cheek? Ah, oh, gosh. Well, I'm, I'm so sorry, everyone. Please, let's just move on to all the other stuff we saw last week. Last week, we all got a rare glimpse of New Glenn. Pathfinder mock-up. It certainly looks super sleek and swanky, but it really is a shame that it's taken Blue Origin to spend this long on what is basically a boilerplate rocket. A similar comparison to this mock-up would be the Starship Super Heavy BN-1, which itself was a Pathfinder prototype. Now, this new Glenn Pathfinder will do a bit more than BN-1 did. Namely, it'll not only be a manufacturing prototype, but will also be used to test and validate transportation and handling systems around both the Blue Origin facility and at Cape Canaveral itself as well as all the bits in between, like the ports. While it's a very essential part of the process, it is a bit disappointing that we're clearly still so far away from a new Glenn flight. But progress is progress, and I'm happy that Blue Origin have got this far. They certainly got a lot further than they did with their lawsuit. <laughs> as I'm sure you're probably aware, Blue Origin sued NASA over the HLS contract with SpaceX, but this week it all came to an end with the federal judge ruling against Blue Origin, meaning that NASA can now proceed to working with SpaceX on getting Starship to the moon. We also had a response from Jeff Bezos, who from this statement, it seems that Blue Origin won't be appealing this decision, meaning that hopefully there'll be no more setbacks to the Artemis program and to the Lunar Starship. In other news last week, China launched three rockets on the 3rd, 5th and 6th of November, the first being a Long March 2C carrying two reconnaissance satellites to low Earth orbit, the second being a Long March 6 carrying just the one Earth observation satellite, again to low Earth orbit, and the third being a Long March 2D, which carried three reconnaissance satellites, again to low Earth orbit. Now, those were the main non-Starship bits of news that I wanted to discuss from last week, but we do have lots of exciting things to look forward to over the next seven days, so let's quickly move along to talking about that. The biggest launch of the week is a crewed Falcon 9 flight, NASA and SpaceX's Crew 3 mission. Wait, didn't I say that last Monday? And the Monday before that, now I think about it. Yes, unfortunately, this launch keeps getting setbacks. The latest delay from the 3rd of November was due to a minor medical issue involving one of the crew members. Not much else is known, but NASA have clarified that the issue isn't a medical emergency and it isn't related to COVID-19. So far, the new date for the launch is the 11th of November, but of course, this may well be subject to change. If you want to hear more on this mission, then there's a link to last week's episode of Space This Week. But to save me from repeating myself, we'll just move on to the next launch of the week, which also happens to be another launch that was delayed from last week. Yes, this time it's Astra's fourth flight test of their prototype Rocket 3, which has had its launch window shifted to November the 8th through to the 14th, meaning that, provided there are no more delays, this could launch at some point this week, Hopefully today, although at the time of me writing this script, Astra are yet to announce that they've performed a static fire of the rocket's first stage, so it's probably more likely that the flight will be taking place a little bit later on in the week. Another delayed launch is also expected this week. On the 9th of November, we'll see JAXA launch an Epsilon rocket from the Uchinora launch site in southern Japan. This mission will be part of JAXA's innovative satellite technology demonstration program, and the rocket itself will be carrying nine technology demonstration satellites. These satellites will all be to test designs and ideas that have been put forward by universities and private companies, and hopefully fruitful results will be achieved by all. The next launch we expect to see this week will be Rocket Lab's latest Electron mission, and will be the second of four dedicated launches for Black Sky, a geospatial intelligence service from American aerospace company Spaceflight Industries. Incorporated. The launch will once again take place from the Mahia Peninsula in New Zealand, and on board will be Black Sky 10 and 11, which are both Earth observation satellites and will both be headed for low Earth orbit. I do love me a good Electron launch, so here's hoping it all goes well for Rocket Lab. On the 12th of November, we'll see SpaceX launch their next Starlink mission, which will see them launch 60 of their satellites into low Earth orbit from Cape Canaveral. I talk about Starlink launches a lot on this channel, and I'm guessing most of you are probably familiar with how these go, so I don't see 
said he needs to dwell on this launch any longer. Moving along, beyond launches now, we're also expecting the return of the Crew 2 mission this week. So far, NASA is aiming for the Dragon capsule to undock from the International Space Station on the 8th of November, and aiming for splashdown and recovery in the early hours of November the 9th, marking the fourth Crew Dragon re-entry and splashdown. And this bit of news also marks the end of the video. Was that even a segue? I don't even know. But it's true, I finished talking about Space News this week. I hope you enjoyed the ride. I changed up the music a little bit for the This Week segment too, to something a little bit more fun. Hopefully you preferred it. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, it's around this time in the video that I give a huge thanks to my Patreons. Their names are scrolling on the left there. And I should also thank every single member of the Lounge Squad, aka the paying members of this channel, who get exclusive emojis to use in the comments, as well as a badge of honor next to their name. And you sometimes get videos a little bit early when uh, I, I can make them early enough. <laughs> if you want to join either my Patreon or the channel membership program, then there are links below on screen. There should also be a couple of video suggestions from my channel. And of course, stay subscribed for more space this week, and I'll see you later.